Hello everyone and welcome back to my art channel. In today's video I'm going to be demonstrating the two main techniques that most artists use for oil paint. And the first one is called a la prima and the second one doesn't really have an official name but it's the more traditional one that's been used for centuries where uh, you build up layers of color with glazes. Uh, now the first one, alla prima, that's Italian word that means all at once. So that's the most common method that most oil painters in today's time period use. And that's where you just complete the painting basically in one or two sittings uh, and you use a more like wet in wet style technique. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to paint the same subject twice in orange and I will use that to demonstrate both techniques so you can get an idea of how they differ and you can use one or the other in your own work or you can even combine them if you would like to so let's get started so the first method i'm going to show you is the a la prima method now the colors that i'm using today are a little bit different from the ones i normally use on my palette but these are extra that I had floating around. But the reason I'm using these is I wanna use the same colors for both demonstrations. And the glazing demonstration, which I'll do second, requires more transparent colors. So that's what I've got here. So I've got uh, white, uh, just plain old titanium white, uh, burnt sienna. You can also use transparent oxide red. Here I have a color called perylene red. Uh, this one is made by Gamblin. It's kind of a cool, transparent red. Then I have a mixed orange, which is a mixture of two different pigments, one yellow, one orange, both transparent. Uh, the actual name of this color is Japanese orange. It's made by uh, Lefranc and Bourgeois. And then finally, I have a chromatic black, which is Gamblin's transparent black, but you could also use ivory black, which is relatively transparent here. Um, so let's get started. So the main a la prima method, uh, the traditional method for a la prima, is the method that most of you will be familiar with, where you start with transparent shadows and then you build up layers of opaque lights so uh so let's get started so okay so i'm going to start my shadows by mixing a little bit of burnt sienna with a tiny bit of black add a little medium there to thin it down so and burnt sienna is a fairly transparent i could sketch in the sketch in the orange first really just before I start okay so now the traditional a la prima method you start by putting in the shadows relatively thinly I've got a little bit mixture of black and burnt sienna here. So I'm going to put in a cast shadow underneath. Um, background.
And with the a la prima method, uh, as I said, you start with your putting your darks in kind of thinly and then you go to your light. So let's get some orange on this orange. And even though this orange is somewhat transparent, if you build it up in a sort of thick layer, it'll it'll maintain the brush strokes and then you can add white to it. And that will further cause it to become Typically, colors get darker as they roll into shadows. We can add a little bit of the red in here to this area. This is just a quick little demo. I won't spend too much time on this. highlight and so that's your basic process by which you create an a la prima method of painting which is to start with the dark shadows then add the lights on top that are opaque and the highlight which is opaque so now that's the method that most people use when they're painting nowadays that's the method that I use primarily almost all of the time in my work but I will show you an alternate method that's more traditional and this is the method that goes back to the Renaissance and some of the medieval paintings and that's where you build up layers of color with glazes over a monochromatic underpainting So what I've done here is uh, earlier today I painted this um, grayscale painting of an orange uh, and this is done in acrylic. So this is dry. I let it dry and as you can see I put in all the values. So the shadows are in, the form's already in. It's like you took a black and white photo uh, of the other version. And so this was, uh, no, this is a technique known as grisaille. I guess it does have a name. Uh, it's grisaille because the underpainting is usually monochromatic. Now in the um, centuries ago, in the Renaissance, in the Middle Ages, typically this would have been done uh, it, with a, um, a color either called uh, verdaccio, which is kind of a grayish green, uh, or an earth tone like raw umber or burnt umber. Uh, it wasn't necessarily black and white. Um, and of course they didn't have acrylic paint back then. So uh, the whole thing was oil. Uh, and so the reason it took so long to, to make a painting was you had to put this down and let it dry. And then you put the next layer down and you let it dry and then the next layer down. And so it would take months or even years sometimes to, to complete a painting. And so, so I will show you that technique here. Now I've done the underpainting. So now what we need is a medium to glaze with. Today I'm going to be using Neo McGilp, which is Gamblin's, uh, this is an Alkyd modern product, uh, but it's like a jelly kind of medium. If you wanted, you could use a traditional 
Merge medium. Uh, you can also, a good glazing medium is, is a mixture of stand oil and um, either Gamsol or turpentine. Uh, stand oil is a very thick oil that it dries very slowly but will dry to kind of an enamel glass-like finish so it's really good for glazing. So what you do is you start out with this monochromatic underpainting and then you're going to take the medium. Okay, so I've got some medium here. So now what we're going to do is take a soft brush. This is a little bit of a softer brush. Um, you could use a synthetic sable or this is a mongoose uh, brush from Rosemary and Company. Uh, they still make these now, but they're synthetic, so they, they're not real mongoose anymore. So then you create a transparent glaze with the medium and a little bit of burnt sienna. And this is like building up, almost like building up layers of stained glass. And then you apply this in a thin layer over the painting. So the monochromatic underpainting that's underneath is still showing through but now it has the color applied to it. So that's why Renaissance paintings have the, that sort of glow because you're looking through almost like layers of stained glass. So it has a very different look from the a la prima type of paintings. I'll take some of that orange yellow and mix it with some medium. And the reason you need the medium is you can't just thin the paint down with thinner because that makes an unstable layer that's too thin. You need that medium in there to act as a binder and as a, as a good layer, but you need it to obviously still have color, you know, but only a little bit of color. So you need that medium to act as the binder to hold the color. See, now as I'm applying this on top of this, you can see that you can still see that underpainting through the orange layer. And at first, it doesn't necessarily look the way you would expect it to, but these layers, you know, if you let it dry in between each layer, you can let it build up layer after layer until the color becomes really rich and really deep. So, we could put some I'm making a glaze here with the perline red. You could put some of that in here. Now, obviously, I can't show you the whole completed demo today because I would have to let the layers dry in between. And I can't do that here. But so you kind of get the idea then how you build up layers of transparent color to get that. effect of, of rich color that glows from within. So that's the grisaille method done by building up layers of color. And you can even, of course, do it on the background as well.
So you can see that that's a very different method and it lends a very different look to the final, final product. Uh, but you can use either technique in your work. Uh, you can combine the two techniques. Uh, I know some artists, you know, if they paint a painting a la prima and then they find out one area of the shadow isn't, isn't warm enough or isn't cool enough, you can fix that with a glaze or you can go over something and glaze, you know, again. And you can even, like I said, uh, for example, like on this, you put the glaze of color down and you can come back in with an opaque bit of paint and put the highlight in just to, to make the highlight stand out a little bit more. So now you've got that opaque highlight sitting on top of the transparent glaze and it gives it a little bit of a look of light more so than the glazed highlight. So anyway, so that's a basic, very basic and quick demonstration of how the two methods work. So I hope that you found this video useful and that you enjoyed watching it. And I thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time.